Let's ultrasound. On today's edition, we'll talk about ultrasound ergonomics and how to scan safely. So let's start out by asking the most obvious question. Ergonomics, why should we care? And the reason is most sonographers work in pain and you all have long careers ahead of you. And pain can end your career earlier than you'd like. Also, it's important to know how patient settings such as ER versus ICU versus outpatient, OR, interventional radiology, inpatient, etc. affects ergonomics. When we're in outpatient settings, it's a lot easier to practice ergonomics because the ultrasound scan lab has already been set up for you and you're bringing the patient into your setup scan lab. When we need to go portable and do exams in the ER, OR, inpatient rooms, this really can affect ergonomics because now we're moving outside of the environment that has been set up for us and we're moving into a hospital type environment. And in the hospital type environment, the beds are a lot larger. It's a lot harder to move things around, especially if you're in the operating room and you're trying to move around operating room equipment. So these inpatient settings can really affect ergonomics and this is where the majority of sonographers obtain injuries on the job, and where we work in pain. So knowing strategies to help combat this is our best defense. And the most important reason we should care about ergonomics, you only have one you, and you don't want to break that person. Let's talk about the components of good ergonomics. First of all, we have the magic triangle, and this was taken from healthysonographer.com. There's three components of the magic triangle. There's you, there's the ultrasound monitor, and there's the patient. And you wanna set up this magic triangle so that you and the bed and the ultrasound monitor form a triangle. And you set this up by angling the back wheels of the ultrasound machine, and you wanna point those towards the bed. You wanna move your ultrasound machine as close to the bed as possible. You wanna make sure that your ultrasound monitor faces you and not the patient. And you wanna make sure that you're forming a small angle with the machine and the bed, not a large angle. The next component of good ergonomics is to follow an exercise plan. And this set of exercises was developed by Sound Ergonomics. And this really helps warm up those muscles prior to scanning. It can also help cool down the muscles after scanning. So you can perform this before an exam, at the end of an exam, or if you have a really lengthy study, such as arterial legs, and really abnormal, complicated arterial leg studies can take a couple of hours, you could even take a short break in the middle of the exam and come out and stretch and perform a couple of these exercises. And this is really to just prepare the muscles and help prevent repetitive strain injuries. Now let's talk about the positioning of the ultrasound bed. And bed positioning is everything. In the first diagram on the upper left-hand side, this is the correct position for an ultrasound machine and a bed. And in this diagram, the ultrasound machine is slightly angled and it's very close and touching the bed and the back wheels are angled towards the bed. In the middle diagram, the ultrasound machine is pointed straight ahead with no angle to the machine. This is an incorrect bed and machine position. And on the image to the far right hand side, the ultrasound machine is angled too sharply. And this creates quite a bit of distance between the ultrasound machine and the bed. They're too far apart from each other. The whole goal is to create an angle, but make it a very small angle so that you're not stretching or reaching with your arm. The next component of good ergonomics is the height of the ultrasound bed. You want the bed to be high enough so that your arm is comfortably resting on the patient. Your forearm should be lying flat on the bed, forming a 90 degree angle with your elbow. Your arm should not be stretched out in a straight line. This is indicative of the bed being positioned too low and your forearm should also not be pointed above your elbow. This is indicative of the bed height being too high. So you wanna think of your elbow and your arm as forming an L shape with your forearm resting comfortably on the bed on top of the patient. 
The next component of good ergonomics is the distance of the ultrasound bed from the wall. In the first example on the far left, the bed is pulled too far down away from the wall. In this case, you'd need to stretch your arm out back behind you in order to reach the abdominal area. And this creates strain on your scanning arm. In the middle image, the bed is shoved up high against the wall. In this case, you'd need to stretch your arm out far in front of you to reach the abdomen of the patient around the ultrasound machine. In the third example to the far right hand side, the bed is pulled down away from the wall and the bed is positioned so that the abdomen is located at the level of the arm. Note in all these examples that the bed and the ultrasound machine are touching and they're as close together as they possibly can be. The other thing you want to closely watch out for is that the bed and the ultrasound machine are not too far apart from each other which would cause you to have to stretch your arm out and or lean your body over, which results in poor ergonomics and can result in shoulder and back and arm strain. All right, the next component of good ergonomics is posture. In the first image to the far left, this is the correct posture. The back is straight and the bed is positioned correctly, which is close to the sonographer and there's no leaning happening. And this should happen whether or not you're standing up scanning or whether you're sitting in a chair. Your back should always be straight. The next position over, the sonographer is slightly leaning over, the back is not straight, and this means that the bed is too far away and the patient is positioned too far away. So moving the bed closer and or moving the patient to the edge of the bed next to you are two ways to avoid this posture. In the next posture, the sonographer is leaning far over and the back is not straight. This happens when the bed is positioned too far away and or the patient is moved too far over on the bed and or when you're trying to reach the left side of the body. Unfortunately, we often get into this position, especially when scanning in patients, but this position specifically leads to shoulder, back, and neck problems. And we should try to avoid it and minimize it as much as possible. In the last posture, the sonographer is bending over and you wanna try to keep the back as straight as possible to maintain proper ergonomics. The next component of good ergonomics is transducer grip and also the weight of the ultrasound cord. Three methods of supporting the weight of the ultrasound cord and taking the weight off of your wrist are, number one, to tuck the cord as much as possible into the holders on the machine until there's just a short cord length. Number two, using a sound ergonomics wrist strap in order to strap the ultrasound cord to your arm, or number three, and this is the least ideal situation, is placing the cord around your neck. I recommend not doing that unless you have no other alternative. Reducing the weight of the cord is essential for taking the weight off of your wrist and helping prevent wrist-related strain injuries. Now let's talk about how to grip the transducer. In the first diagram, to the left, this is the correct transducer hold. Control of the transducer is supported by the fingers touching the patient. The hand is low on the probe, and this grip maintains proper transducer control, and it also requires less gripping force of the transducer. The danger is when you grip the transducer too tightly and your knuckles start turning white, that this is causing strain and injury to your wrist muscles. The center diagram, is an incorrect hold of the transducer. The grip is too high on the transducer. The fingers are not touching the patient to help with the control of the probe. And this requires a stronger transducer grip to control the probe, which can lead to the white knuckle syndrome where your knuckles are turning white and you're having to use a lot of force in order to support fine movements of that probe. The last image on the right hand side is also an incorrect transducer grip. And with this grip, the grip is too high on the probe, and also the hand placement is backwards, which is going to require wrist extension, which is an unnatural movement of the wrist, which will result in a repetitive strain injury of your wrist. It also requires a much stronger grip to control the probe with this type of transducer grip, resulting in the white knuckle syndrome and causing strain injury to the wrist.
You always want to think about when you're holding the transducer probe, are you in control of the probe or is the probe in control of you? If you're holding too high up on the probe and your fingers are not helping support the control of that transducer, then the probe is in control of you. And this can also lead to wrist strain and injury over time. 